Hey guys, it's Silver Snorlax, and it's been quite a while since I've had an upload for you guys to enjoy. To be fair, I've been very busy over the past couple of months with a couple of different projects, but some of the stuff I've been working on have been uh, a series of projects involving protection for our uh, graded card collections and our card collections uh, in general. And I'm actually hitting a point now where I want to start uploading some footage of some of the tests and testing that uh, I'll be doing going forward. So this video is kind of a jumping off point for collectors who are interested in things that may threaten their collection. They will try and gather some answers to um, fairly common questions. And this is also kind of an open forum for you to um, express what you may feel like is a concern uh, to your card collection, especially if you keep your cards at home. Um, so this is very much what this uh, video is uh, all about what what uh, we can do as collectors uh, to better protect ourselves and our collections. So, uh, before I discuss exactly what it is I'm testing today, I do want to direct you to the description of this video, uh, where you'll find a few links to a couple of guides I've written, uh, both on protective safes as well as heat resistance testing for PSA slabs. Uh, what I'm filming today ties in with those guides uh, pretty much directly, so I highly encourage you to go ahead and review those uh, for some background. Anyway, uh, let's talk about what I'm testing and why I'm testing it the way I'm testing it. So, a very common question I see fellow collectors ask is what is the best way to secure and protect a card collection at home uh, from a fire? So, my initial research that I started doing uh, ages ago, months and months ago, um, that, that initial research took me to fireproof safes, and I figured my research would probably just end there. However, um, something that I've discovered and actually published in the guides that I've written is that the melting point on a PSA slab is very low. It's somewhere between 150 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, fireproof safes, however, generally allow a fairly high internal temperature by comparison. So most uh, UL rated safes, that's your um, higher, higher burglary protection safes, um, actually allow an internal temperature of 350 degrees, a maximum of 350 degrees uh, for an hour or more in the case of a fire. So a fireproof safe is actually not sufficient protection by itself for a PSA graded card collection or just a card collection in general. So again, referencing my guides, I looked at um, what would happen to slabs at 350 degrees and I got results very much on par with this. This was uh, encapsulated uh, at one point and is now just kind of a warped mess of plastic labeling uh, former Pokemon cards. So unfortunately 350 didn't work very well for that slab and that melting actually occurred inside of 10 minutes. It happened very, very quickly. So again, referencing my uh, guides on heat resistance testing, I took a look at that and said, well, the, the internal temperature for those safes is at a maximum. Let's lower it down to a level that is maybe a little more consistent with what we might actually see in a house fire. So when I worked out the ratios, it turns out that the average house fire is about 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. Like, that's the flashpoint of it. So the internals uh, of a safe would actually run a lot closer to about 200 degrees. So same test. I uh, ran, ran a... Uh, uh, slab through at 200 degrees and got results like this. Again, this was only inside of about 10 minutes. And what happened here is the slab actually warped and when it warped it bent the card uh, inside the slab itself. Uh, basically just destroying the card so it couldn't be sent back for a regrade. Essentially not sufficient protection. And again, only happening inside of a few minutes, so something to keep in mind there. Uh, so moving on, uh, some of the collectors that I've spoken to have kicked around the idea of a safe within a safe to better protect and insulate a collection from a fire. And my personal opinion on the matter is that buying two safes is significantly overkill and there has to be a more cost-effective alternative to achieve an adequate level of fire and heat protection from our trading cards uh, in general. So enter the fire chest. While it's not a fire safe, uh, it's pretty much the next best thing. It's a very good cost alternative. These usually cost under a hundred bucks. Of course, it depends on size and brand and all that good stuff. Um, they fit within um, actual like UL rated safes. No problem, of course, you have to check dimensions and all that good stuff. Um, but essentially, these are made 100% for um, resisting fire. So that's a, that's a good thing, that's a huge thing. Um, so 
when we talk about fire, the question that stems from all this protect, protection talk is, um, how long will something like this last? And does heat transfer actually penetrate the case to the point that the external temperature of the fire chest would actually match the internal temperature of the fire chest? And so just to be clear, I'm not testing to see if a fire chest can survive a fire. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there that show that they can. The bigger question is, can they survive long enough uh, within the contents of a uh, UL rated safe? Uh, can they survive long enough to actually withdraw those contents at a later point in time and have them unaffected? Is it enough insulation and fire protection uh, for those who already own uh, fairly high-end burglary rated safes? So, um, let's see, moving on. Uh, so my testing today uh, will include a fire chest that is exposed to several hours of high heat. Um, specifically, that is a barbecue grill running at about 350. Uh, as well as several testing supplies that I've actually included inside of the case, um, PSA slabs I'll show you in a minute here. Uh, we'll see if those can kind of um, stay protected long enough, or how long they can stay protected uh, while they're exposed to temperatures of that magnitude. So uh, once I complete my testing, I'll be posting a second video with results, as well as an in-depth written guide that will go over specifics of exactly how the test was done, how the setup was um, done regarding all the testing. It'll be very, very in-depth, but uh, for those of you who like the short version, video is probably the way to go. You'll see uh, what exactly burned or didn't burn. So, real fast, let me show you my testing supplies. Exactly what I what I figured we as collectors would probably put in something like this, and of course that varies for everybody. So, if I tilt my camera forward here a little bit, I'm actually going to be throwing in a whole booster box, a whole sealed booster box. We'll see how that does. I'll be doing an individual um, actual booster pack for those of you who like to collect booster packs. I'm doing a couple different um, holders as well. I've got screw down holders. I've got magnetic one touch holders. I have a snap case in here. The standard top loader with sleeve. Uh, of course, you can't go wrong with card saver ones. I have several in here with different uh, sleeving configurations, gaming sleeves, double sleeve, single sleeve. Uh, going with no hard protective covering, just standard sleeves. One standard raw card. I figured the fire energy was most appropriate for that because that would be what would burn first. And of course I've got a couple of PSA slabs themselves. I have one that actually has a um, uh, protective sleeve around it kind of an old Ultra Pro one that I had, as well as just a standard B-flat sleeve, and nothing around it, just, just, the, just the slab itself. So, a couple of those. We'll be testing all of that to figure out how that survives, if it survives, and we'll kind of take it from there. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go outside. I've got some grilling to do. I'm really looking forward to what results we might have. Again, this is a jumping off point video. If you have concerns regarding your collection, if you are curious about anything you think your collection might face, uh, and it's, again, we kind of focus on what, what we can do at home, not necessarily in other locations, but what we can do to better protect ourselves, um, again, comment section is there. It's open. Um, throw it out there, and let's try and help each other. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will have results posted soon.